The next part is what to pursue in the world. What is to be pursued? That is the second aspect of dharmic life or dharmya kriya. So, what should be pursued? In life, what is worth pursuing are called purushartha, and these are four dharma, artha, kam, and moksha. Dharma, as being mentioned uh, many times earlier. It is righteousness, virtue, duty arising from uh, harmony with self and harmony with social and natural environment. Calm is fulfillment of our sensuous pleasure, biological needs and earth is fulfillment of our social needs that includes material gains, but earth also in my understanding includes acquisition of social recognition, reputation, all that which has which brings us reputation in the society. So, social recognition is the reflection uh, is the form of artha. Moksha is the liberation that is a spiritual enlightenment. In yogic tradition it is realization of uh, Brahman and in general in the Hindu tradition it is called self realization. The real self is not which is limited by ignorance, limit, limited by the uh, ego, but real self is that bigger one. Real self is that which includes everything and awakening to that. So, what so liberation from what? Liberation from the limited identity. So, moksha is the liberation from the limited identity to the cosmic or Brahmanic uh, Brahma identity. So, these four aims highlight the harmony of different dimensions. Uh, uh, the Indica today's uh, picture is taken from uh, uh, to explain this concept. Uh, Indica many of you must be aware is a very active organization which uh, gives courses on the Indian tradition and Indian culture. Uh, in, in one of the lectures, Arth, Kam, Dharma and Moksha are compared with the Maslow's need hierarchy theory and uh, many of you must be aware of the Maslow's need hierarchy theory which says that human beings live at different needs which are generally arranged at hierarchical level, physiological need, safety need, need for belongingness, having a self esteem and self actualization. Arth, they have compared that with the safety and uh, physiological need. Kam is related to belonging and esteem needs, and dharma is related to self actualization need. There is lot of debate whether needs are actually arranged in hier hierarchical manner or not, or they might be arising simultaneously. Some people may live at the higher level of needs without actually satisfying lower level of needs. All that debate is there in the Maslow's need hierarchy schema, but this comparison seems to be valid and that is why uh, uh, it is included over here. The comparison of self actualization with dharma is also seems to be valid because self actualization is our ability to be what we can be and dharma is also realization of our true potential and realization of our true nature. And that realization and enacting on that nature in harmony with self and, and in our harmony with the social and natural environment. So, that comparison seems to be valid that is why uh, this uh, schema is here to further to understand this idea of the dharm, dharma kriya and how it is connected to the as a one modern concept. None of these four is more or less important. That means, dharma and moksha they sound adhyatmic, they sound spiritual, kam and earth they sound mundane, more worldly. None of these four are more or less important. So, in our tradition 
avidya is considered the one which is employed which is about something other than brahman something other than adhyatma something other than spiritual that is called avidya vidya is considered only that pursuit which is to realize the brahman or to realize our spiritual self or to awaken and uh, evolve our adhyatmic or spiritual self in upanishad it is said that andham tama pravishanti ye vidya mupasate tato bhuya ev te tamo ya udvidyayam rata that means they who follow avidya enter into gloomy darkness andham tama pravishanti they enter into the darkness who enter the darkness ye vidya munupasyati those who only follow the vidya tato bhuye ev te those as well enter into the gloomy darkness who only follow avidya so only following vidya and only following avidya both will lead to darkness and the ishopanishad further in the, in the other mantras says that uh, we have to follow all four vidya and avidya dharma arth kaam moksha of course arth and uh, kaam must be governed by must be limited by must be disciplined by the dharma and all that should lead to moksha the liberation the, that is the ultimate objective and dharma is the pivot around which arth and kaam have to be managed so that is the second aspect of dharmya kriya third aspect of dharmya kriya is right livelihood dharmic livelihood why we enter into livelihood why we pursue livelihood to pursue to get arth to uh, uh, to get prosperity <coughs> the prosperity in the uh, indian tradition is reflected in the form of goddess lakshmi in the tradition eight types of lakshmis are identified that means livelihood should be aimed at attaining any or more than one lakshmis as explained here so different form of lakshmis are adi lakshmi that is the central one you see in this picture adi lakshmi is the eternal lakshmi that gives spiritual pursuit that gives spiritual awakening so if people are able to integrate their livelihood with their spiritual urge then that then they get the adi lakshmi means the ultimate lakshmi from where all other lakshmis actually emanate second aspect is dhana lakshmi we all know we all work for prosperity dhanya lakshmi that which gives food crop that is related to dhanya lakshmi gaja lakshmi that gives cattle power we all know that even today lot of societies are agrarian societies or societies which are predominantly based on uh, whose economy is predominantly based on the uh, cattle uh, santan lakshmi the progeny uh, progeny is also reflects is a kind of prosperity uh, so that is reflected in this picture with the lakshmi um, uh, having a small uh, child in her lap uh, veer lakshmi and dhairya lakshmi that is the another form of lakshmi veller self management there it also means patience these aspects are also very important in some of the professions some of the livelihoods for example in the armed forces they pursue valor they pursue discipline so they are actually pursuing veer lakshmi or dhairya lakshmi <coughs> jaya lakshmi and vijaya lakshmi these are the those form of lakshmis which give power for realizing our shobha sankalp right intentions many of us have right intentions many of us have shobha sankalp many of us wish to do good things many a time our sankalpas our deep resolve 
are not able to fructify and that spiritual power which gives us energy to fructify to materialize our right intentions that power is embodied in the form of Jaya Lakshmi or Vijaya Lakshmi. Those who are uh, listening to this lecture th some of their name also may be like Jaya Lakshmi and Vijaya Lakshmi these are very common names and uh, last is Vidya Lakshmi that is knowledge. Uh, so, that form of Lakshmi that form of livelihood where people pursue knowledge and that is blessed by the spiritual power called Vidya Lakshmi. So, livelihood should be in line with acquiring having Lakshmi having the blessing of Lakshmi not acquiring uh, because Lakshmi is form of the mother you cannot acquire mother you can only pray to mother or you can uh, only uh, uh, get sneha, get affection from the mother, you cannot acquire mother. So, that is why Lakshmi or prosperity in the yogic tradition is not acquired, it is embraced, it is respected. Uh, so, these are the form of Lakshmi's and interestingly uh, when this typology was explained in the classical text somebody would have asked that we see in society people who uh, collect prosperity and collect crop and they attain prosperity even with the unholy means dishonest ways. Uh, so, will that prosperity be not be called Lakshmi? So, for that prosperity which is attained without following dharma is called a Lakshmi means that might be money, but that is not qualified to be called Lakshmi. So, a Lakshmi is also one of the terms uh, used to explain this idea of livelihood must be anchored in the righteousness in the harmony with self and the social and natural environment.